guys. Glad to have you back after lunch. Did you guys enjoy the service today? Yes. yes. All right. We had a wonderful Hebrew class, Hebrew class, great time of worship, and a great uh, study of God's Word today. And Parshat Bo was really a good one. Really, really good one. How many glad that God hears our midnight cry yes. of our pain? He understands our and hears our prayer and receives our praise. And the beautiful thing is, he rewards us with a midnight miracle, uh, a Passover type deliverance. And so we're going to basically look at how we look at Torah portions um, and understand the blessings. Now, for some of you that have the, let me borrow that a little bit. Sure. Mine's in the car. Uh, you have this messianic. Jewish Family Bible. This is a great one. You can practice your blessing. And so the blessings are all in the back. There's a great wealth of Shabbat blessings in here. And uh, extra helps. So they have the welcoming of the Sabbath. Um, blessings. The blessings of the family. Prayer sanctification. Blessing over the... Uh, fruit of the vine, and the bread that comes forth from the earth like we normally do after Shabbat, or after the service. Uh, there is the Shema in here, the blessings after, or grace after meals, uh, called Birkat Hamazon, for Thanksgiving. The Amidah is even in here, the first two blessings of the Amidah, the, what's known as the Avot, the Patriarchs and the Gilbert Road, which are God's mighty acts. A lot of good stuff in here. Matalu is in here. Um, the Aaron's benediction, or priestly blessing, is in here. The complete Kaddish is in here. Uh, Abdallah is in here. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you should have the blessings for the Torah in here, right? I don't think they have that one in here. Um, no, I didn't see it, but not that it's not, but mm -hmm. I didn't see it in here. So I thought I saw the blessings mm -hmm. for the Torah in here. This last week you read it. So, I guess it wasn't in here. Maybe it, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. So, I was certain that it was in there. But basically, the blessing for the giving of the Torah is said before reading, and then there's a closing blessing after the reading. If you find it, let me know. So what we've been looking at is some of your Torah portions. I'll give you the list of the ones that, uh, that I know that are in the room. And um, I'll go down my list. Okay, so we have Zach, who I don't think is here right now. He has Bechalotacha. Uh, Greg has Achremot and Kedushim. Uh, Rosalind has Kitavo. Ladon has Vizot. She's not here today. Um, David, uh, he was here this morning. He has Kitavo. Tim, Ki Kitisa. Uh, Trish, Kitavo. Did she come in? I don't think she did. Uh, Vicky has Vizot. And Mary Lou has Hazinu. And Kenneth. Devarim, Erica, David, they're not here. Uh, let's see. So Dan has Vayeshev. And Steve, who's not with us today, he's sick, uh, has Bereshit. Teresita, um, Akev, Joanne, Miketz, and Deborah has Naso. So those are the ones I have for I some reason. Mine. Hmm? I need to change mine. Is that good? You said I had uh, Kikavo. It's not Kikavo. No, I... Kikavo. Oh, but you're saying because we had to switch it to a female. Okay, so that's what I have so far. Though. All right, so for those of you that I don't have it, let me see the hands of those I didn't name your name. Your name. Okay, so what you need to do is give Greg your first and last name, if you haven't already, uh, the day you were born, the time that you believe you were born, even if you have to estimate. I always say, you know, you can always guess if you're a morning person or an evening person, that kind of gives you a, you know, or afternoon person, that kind of gives you a hint of probably when you were born, because you've probably been running on that clock ever since. Uh, I find that to be true most of the time. Um, and uh, the city and state you're born in, sometimes it'll ask the country that you're born in, obviously you'll look it up that way. And so the translator, calculator we're using is with Chabad.org, I believe, and they ask those specific questions to be able to find out the Torah portion 
of your birth. Okay. So what I'm going to do is give you an example of how we look at a, a Torah portion. This morning we did Bereshit. And, uh, oh, actually we did um, Parshat Bo. But we're going to start with Bereshit. And uh, Bereshit, in the Hebrew... is named after the first significant word in Hebrew. Rush. I think that's the vowel pointing on that. I'm going to get my Bible of the Bima for me. Thank you. So, here we have Bereshit. And in the beginning, we have the name of the portion, which starts with a prefix, because out of 22 Hebrew letters, we have 11 of those consonant letters can be prefixes. Also, those 22 letters give us also five of them that can be used as a vowel indicator. We have five vowel sounds that's usually marked by the dots and dashes. This is called Nikud, vocalization. Niku just gives the sound to the consonant letters. Thank you. And the way I like to think of the, the consonants is these consonant letters are like a shofar. They have no sound until you give them wind. They're wind, wind instruments. So the consonant letters are the shofar. The vowels, Niku, give it sound. So the breathing helps to uh, give you the length of the sound and, and, and basically helps you sound out that consonant letter with a vowel. Basically, to make a syllable, all you need is a consonant plus a vowel, and that would give us what we call an open syllable where your mouth stays open from the consonant and the vowel sound, as in the word sha or shalom. And the last part, lom, is a uh, added consonant at the end of that vowel, which would then close it off. Okay, question? Did you got the dot missing on your machine, and everything else is correct. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I don't want to lose my dot for my sheet. Come on now. <laughs> All right, so now, here we've got bare sheet. So, this is a prefix for in. Okay? So, this is the first Torah portion of the year. Uh, of the after rolling the scroll back for some Torah, Bereshit. So everybody, turn to Genesis uh, one for me, and let's get a voluntary reader to read the first verse of Genesis. Yeah, most of you can quote it. That's why Pete, that needs to be your Torah portion. We need to just change your birthday if it doesn't fit. It you need to have it. <laughs> now, what do we mean by this Torah portion being connected to your bar bar mitzvah training uh, for your celebration? is that the day, the hour that you were born was within a week where this was the Torah portion in that year on the Hebrew calendar. Therefore, every single year it might move around because your Hebrew date and your birth date are not the same because your birth date is based upon your Gregorian calendar and on the year you were born, it, it locks in. Whatever it was, it was. But every other year, uh, because the Hebrew calendar is based on a lunar cycle, it's going to move around because we have kind of a solar lunar thing going on, you know, but we, uh, uh, the solar calendar has 365.25 days in a year if you're looking at the leap year, uh, adding a day every four years in the month of February. So we know that the lunar calendar has different dating. So what happens is that the birthday in the Gregorian calendar links up with a Hebrew date, and that Hebrew date has a certain Torah portion that was read that week. So therefore, everybody born during that time... It's calling out my... It's calling out his, his portion as Bereshit. Perfect. <laughs> because there couldn't, no, be any, there couldn't be any better Torah portion for him to know than the one that he already knows. <laughs> Alright, so let's take a look at... Let's take a look at, in the beginning here... We have Bereshit, so the letter, letter Beit here, this is the letter Beit, means in. Now you'll hear people say Bet, and a lot of Israelis do. But if you look at the Hebrew spelling, it's more like this, Beit. And that's because the name of this letter is spelled this way. The letter Beit, the Yud, and the Tav, 
and the vowel is a sere yud. So here we have the, the letter base, we're reading from right to left. The sere is going to give me an e. The y is either, uh, the yud is either a y or an i. And the tav is a t. So here you have bait. Everybody say bait. Bait. This is the name of the letter. This is how it's spelled. <coughs> but sometimes it differentiates between bait as a construct form for house of, because that's what it means. Some people will just say bet as if it's just a B-E-T. Now, because of a certain Ashkenazi rule, in English we end up with this letter, bet. So everyone turn to Psalm 119. I know I told you, told you to turn to Genesis 1-1, uh, one, one, but let's go to Psalm 119. Okay, so, you guys were recording. Okay, so, uh, Psalm 119. And let's see how many of your Bibles reflect the Hebrew alphabet here. I read from Psalm 119 today in the teaching. How many remember that? Yes. And I started with the letter Chet, mm -hmm. which you'll find that each verse or each eight verses has a Hebrew letter starting with Aleph. Now, um, what's interesting about that, let me see the hands of those that have before verse 1, the letter, the word Aleph written out, or the Hebrew letter, okay? So some of your versions might actually put the Hebrew letter, the others will spell it out, transliterate it, and it should say Aleph. It will either be spelled like this, like in English, Aleph, or it will be spelled like this, Israeli style. I think Spanish does the same. Okay. It uses an F for the PH. Because in Hebrew, the letter Pei, so if we have the Aleph, like this, right? We have an Aleph, a Laman, and a Pei, in this case, Pei Sofit. Remember how we have five final forms you learned in our Hebrew class this morning? And so here is the Aleph, here is the Laman, here is the letter pay. Normally, pay looks like this. But when it's the last letter, it's almost like this drops down to here. Most of the final letters, except for mem, go beyond the imaginary writing line. So imagine we had dots like this, like you do when you practice as a kid, in this writing line. So most of the final letters, there's five of them, that they change the way they look at the end of a word. So um, Aleph is a perfect example of this, where the letter Pe, in this case, would be Fe. Okay? And this is supposed to be the picture of a mouth. You can see kind of like the mouth there, can't you? So we have an ox head, the Aleph. We have the Lamed, which is the ox goat. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? So you have an ox head and an ox goat. A goat is a stick to prod the animal along, to prick the animal. Uh, in King James, Paul was told, why are you kicking against the pricks? Mm -hmm. It's actually, in other versions, why are you kicking against the ox goats? Because uh, an ox herder would take a stick to prod the animal along when he's being a little stubborn. And Saul of Tarsus was being a little stubborn mm -hmm. in receiving who Yeshua was. So Yeshua corrected him, why are you being so stubborn and kicking against the ox goat? Mm -hmm. So here is a shepherd's staff or an ox goat. It's a, a gnarly piece of stick that's used. Like a teacher would point with the stick. Um, spare the rod, spoil the child. The rod was a rod of instruction, mm -hmm. not a rod to beat the kid. Mm -hmm. But the southern mm -hmm. culture is, well, we're going to beat him. Mm -hmm. Spare the rod, spoil the child. <laughs> so it's really a teaching tool, a tool of uh, an incentive to learn, not just through the school of hard knocks, okay? So now, here is face so feet at the end of the letter. Okay, so here you have uh, Aleph as the first letter for the eight verses. Now, if I were to show you in my Bible, you will find out why Aleph is there. Aleph is there because in the Hebrew, the first eight verses, the first word of each verse starts with a word that's spelled with the letter Aleph. So how many actually have a Hebrew Bible and could turn to Psalms? How many actually have a Hebrew Bible for Psalms? Or if you have the Blue Letter Bible app or blueletterbible.org, you could look up Psalm. 119, <coughs> verse 1, and you will find, as you go from verse 1 to verse 2, verse 3, every single sentence starts with the letter Aleph. 
So imagine that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight words, and here's an olive, here's an olive, all the way down. That's exactly what you're going to find if you were to look at the Bible I'm using. So take a look here. See the olive there? Another olive, another olive. Um, all the way. I gotta go to the next page. And then we have olive, 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 olive. Then it goes bait, 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 all the way down. Gimbal, 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 gimbal. So basically, how this works is. I'll just show a few of you this, because some of you have seen this before. Olive, olive, olive. Olive, 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 olive. It's kind of an uh, acrostic. Bait, 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 bait. So what your Bible is doing is telling you the first eight verses, the word is spelled with olive. It's like an acrostic. You know, you know what an acrostic is? What would be the acrostic for Bible? Basic instruction before leaving earth. Okay. What's fear? False evidence appearing real, right? What we've done is we've created a system where it says something one way, and then you put a word along as a cross stick, a cross from it, creating a cross, okay? So imagine if the Hebrew psalmist here puts an olive on a verse. I'm going to start a uh, poetic, maybe even prophetic utterance, starting with that word or a letter of, that's, that's spelled with that word. And so you go down the list and you find out that Aleph is uh, used on all the eight verses. And then when you get to number nine, it goes letter B. 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 And then it goes down Gimel, 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 Gimel. And so that's why you can see 176 verses with the whole alphabet <laughs> being listed. If you want to practice your alphabet, just go to Psalm 119. And notice, you'll see that that changes every eight verses. So eight times 22 letters is 176. So that's exactly how many verses are in that song. Pretty amazing to even be able to construct verses, 176 verses following the alphabet or the olive bait. So that's something for you to study on your own. Uh, you can even go to any website uh, and study that. Another fun website that I like is Nechon Mamre. And they have the entire Hebrew Bible uh, at this website. I think it's dot org when you confirm that. Dot org. So, mechon org, and when you go there, it actually has options to read the Bible in different languages. So, I picked the Hebrew and English, uh, so it looks like this, <coughs> looks like that, and so I pick over here, they have all Bibles, Hebrew, uh, French, Hebrew, Spanish, Hebrew, Portuguese. So you can even pick the language you want. Um, don't pick Hebrew Bible in English, you need the one that... Hebrew English. Hebrew English. So I have my, yeah, so it says Hebrew English Bible. So then it lists all the books, the Torah, the prophets, and the writings. So let's pick Genesis. I'm going to pick Genesis. Boom. So you can see... Here's my Genesis passage. Mm -hmm. The letter Beit is enlarged, so that's the first letter Beit. It's the first letter of the Torah. Second letter of the alphabet, though. <coughs> the letter Beit is enlarged, okay? So Beit means in, what does Rashid mean? First. 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 So another way to translate Beit is instead of in, you can also translate it at. So put those two together. At first. At first. Okay. So, Bereshit Bara would be the next uh, word that is listed, and that is actually a verb. So, we have Bereshit 
Bara is the verb. And then we have Elohim. So this is the first three words of the Torah. Bereshit, bara, Elohim. Say that with me. Bereshit, bara, Elohim. Now, this same website will let you play it in Hebrew. So, hopefully I have my volume up enough where you can hear a little bit of it. I don't have my speaker hooked up here. The five books of the Torah. Per, uh, par, parashat Bereshit. This is the Torah. Yeah. And he's just going through, and he goes through the whole entire Torah, book by book, chapter by chapter. So that's one way to learn the Hebrew. If you just want to actually hear it pronounced, Bereshit bara Elohim, even the timing that is most uh, done in, or respected in, in Israeli pronunciation, this is the way it would be pronounced. Now he's actually going relatively slow because Israelis don't talk that slow. They talk very fast. <coughs> Bereshit bara Elohim. Everybody say that. Bereshit bara Elohim. Again. Bereshit bara Elohim. So now, if you get around Ashkenazis, they're going to say, they're going to change the T of Bereshit. They're going to say, there's no dot in that letter of Tav known as a Dagesh. If there was a Dagesh, we'd give it a strong T. If there's no Dagesh, what happens to some... Uh, Grammaris, and the, what they do is they change it to TH, soften it. So that's how we got Beth. In words like in, 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 B, uh, B uh, the Beit, the Yud, and the Tav, they end up saying there's no Dagesh here, there's not a strong T, it's a soft T. They turn it into a TH sound. Just like the P became a PH sound for F. Okay? Among Ashkenazi pronunciation, especially those who speak Yiddish, they say, no, we even have a different sound. We make it an S sound. So, ta becomes sa. So that's how they soften their T to an S sound. So instead of saying Bereshit, they say, they'll even give this uh, uh, a quicker read for that Shiva there, that short E sound, and they're going to say Bre, Breshish. Breshish. So if you look at the Art Scroll Chumash, it actually transliter transliterates it Breshish. And, um, Again, I didn't learn Hebrew that way, so that's not my pronunciation of it. I'm not, uh, even though I have Ashkenazi blood, as, long as, as well as uh, 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 Italian Jewish blood and French and all those wonderful uh, European bloodlines, I don't follow that because I didn't learn that. I learned it from a Sephardic uh, Jew who taught me Sephardic Hebrew, and that's the way it's pronounced in Israel today. So you want real Hebrew, it should be Bereshit. Bereshit. But it's a short E here. So get over it quickly. Bereshit. Bereshit. Bereshit bara Elohim. Now, if we were singing the Torah for our bar mitzvah, we would actually go to a different website. It would sound like this. Bereshit bara Elohim. Say that with me. Can you say that? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So, what I would like to do is not only make sure that you know your Torah portion, what websites you can go to start practicing, I want to actually show you how to do the cantillation. We watched a video of, uh, last year to kind of give you an idea. But once we lock in each one of your Torah portions, we're going to start, we're going to give you two resources. One, to just learn it by melody, and the other to know why the melody exists. And so we will start with learning the melody, and the other website I will take you to is actually a bar mitzvah website. 
Isn't that great? That's a novel idea. We're going to go to bible.ort.org. Okay, so it's bible.ort.org. That's the website. So when I pull that up, look what it happens. It comes to Navigating the Bible, uh, Volume 2. It says online bar slash bot mitzvah tutor. Now this is actually something you can buy as a software to go on a computer. But it's free. Yes. So why buy it? Yes. And you don't have to clutter up your hard drive. Yes. So I'm going to click English because it gives me Russian and Spanish also. So if you want to do it in Spanish, you can. I don't think they do Tagalog, sorry. <laughs> okay, so we have tools for study, for translation, Torah, Haftarot, and Brachot, which are the uh, Torah portion, uh, the prophet reading, and then the Brachot, the blessings. And they have a Divrei Torah, which is a summary of each portion with kind permission from Or Sameach International, is what this, been, uh, this information is given by. Now, so that means I can click on Torah, and let's see where Mordechai first learned how to do the Torah. In fact, he still uses this uh, wonderful tool. So we're going to go to this part. Now I'm going to enlarge it a little bit. Now notice, they have the Torah portion in colors there with a little microphone next to it. So I can click any of one of them and play it. So here we go. That's here, Bereshit Bara Elohim. Now you just did it with me. Elohim et ve'et Alright, you learned you learned your first lesson. Give yourself a quick <laughs> lesson. Now that only works for Pete, because he's the only one with better sheets in here, I think. But now we're gonna go back and we're going to say for instance pick a different one. So let's first of all go to Exodus. And you'll see when you click on Exodus, a list of all the Torah portions are on the side. So we have Shemot Ba'era Bo. So I'm going to click Bo because I'm going to click the one that was for today. Let's see how well Martin really did. <laughs> I click on the 10-1 microphone. Almost sounds like Martin on there, doesn't it? Yeah. This is how young boys learn the Hebrew. They just learn it from someone that literally teaches them how to sing it. It's like going to a vocal coach, and that's exactly what happened. So now, you can go verse by verse. I'll go to the next verse, since he did more than one. He did four. You ever want to join the opera? <laughs> Alright, so now, how is this useful? Not only do we have the sound of how it's cantered, which is what we call cantillation. Cantor from the Latin cantar, to sing. So we're singing this, a cantor, in Hebrew we call him a chazan. And um, so this chazan or cantor is going to sing the Torah, but watch this. We also have transliteration for you. So we have the Hebrew on the left, and we have a transliteration here. God said to Moses, go to Pharaoh. Now it's funny, they have go in, in, in purple. It comes down, comes down to here. It's a C note on Exodus 6.11. Probably on Exodus 6.11, it's going to tell you that it really means come. Mm. But they're going with the nominal translation that most people translated go. Uh, and then it says, I have made him, uh, advisor, his advisor, him and his advisor stubborn, so that I will be able to demonstrate these miraculous signs among them. So it has right here, Vayomer Adonai el Moshe bo el paro ki ani hikbarati et riho ve'et lev avodav 
למען שיטי אותותיי אלה בקרבו. So it has everything transliterated for you. They made it easy. So you can look at the Hebrew letters, get affiliated with those Hebrew letters, because when you look at the Torah scroll, that's all you're going to have. But you can also practice every day by looking at it and playing it at the same time. So you can have one tab open on your computer playing it, and then keep the other tab with the words right there, or have your Bible open in Hebrew if you're following it that way, or print this out. You can even record this to your phone, or download the recording. Either way, you can even put your phone to record, just hit record, and listen to it every single day. That's what I did when I was first learning. And so, this is going to help you learn your Torah portion. And then you choose how many verses you're going to do. Now, sometimes Martin tries to get a little adventurous, and he does like six, seven, eight verses. I told him, that's slow your roll. Just do a couple verses. If you can get through one, I'll be happy. But I think you should be able to at least do more than but a bit out on our elements, Shaley more, because that's just, and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, we want to actually hear the name of the Torah portion. Most of the portions start off with but a bit out on I. Um, and usually the name of the Torah portion is in the second sentence. So because the beginning just says, and the, and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, we can't name every Torah portion after that. That's not the essence of it. What did he say? That's the essence. What did he actually say? Okay. So who wants to hear their individual one that knows theirs? Uh, done. What? Okay, we're going to start right here. Sunday Shavuot 1857-54. What's the name of the portion? What's the name of the portion? Yitro. Yitro. Okay, so this is in the book of Exodus. Uh, Yitro. And it's in two portions from today. So you ready? In a couple weeks now. <laughs> we'll check again next year, all right? So, so we'll go to Yitro, and I'll go ahead and click on Exodus 18.1. Down the stairs, up the stairs. <laughs> okay, so when you're when you're doing this, you need to listen to it enough times where you hear the melody. This is not the level of learning why we can't uh, uh, canter it a certain way. This is just getting familiar with hearing it to get you know all together. So when you hear a song in Hebrew, um, if we were to sing Shabtamayim Besasom Memaneha Yeshua, Shabtamayim Besasom Memaneha Yeshua, my 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 my, oh my Besasom, my 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 my, oh my Besasom, hey 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 hey, my 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 Besasom, my 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 Besasom. Now, how long do you think it took me to get all those melodies? It took a while. Shabtamayim Besasom Memaneha Yeshua. You know, I can't. I can't learn it faster than my brain can handle. So I had to learn melody. I had to learn words. I had to learn what the words meant. Now, here's the other website you should be going to. You should be going to Blue Letter Bible dot org or download the app, Blue Letter Bible. Just type that in. Say if you have an iPhone, you can type that in in your app store and you can download that. What happens is you can click on a verse, touch it with your finger, it's going to give you options. You're going to choose interlinear, interlinear slash concordance, and it's going to pull up the Hebrew text, break down every single Hebrew word in its root form, and then it's going, if you click on an individual root, it will take you to every verse where that root is ever used. And you could do a, an extensive study on how that Hebrew root in its basic meaning gets translated in different verses, different ways, through different genres of meaning. And then all of a sudden, you have information that when you meet with me about your Devar Torah, because you have to meet with me, I need to see your sermon in an outline form. And that means even if it's a paragraph, I want to see your thoughts and ideas and where you got it from. Because we're not going to let you just get up in front of the congregation and just say a bunch of stuff that's not true. Well, I read online somewhere that this portion means this and this and this and this and that. And that's not actually how we teach here. So you're going to make sure you test it 
by being accountable to your rabbi, making sure that what you're about to say makes sense, it's clear. I'll give you tips on how to say it, how to lead from one point to another. Maybe you're going to have three basic things that you got out of it. You know, oh, there, you know, two or three witnesses, every word's established. Maybe it's only two things, okay? There's two things I see in this Torah portion I really believe it speaks to us today as a, a congregation or as a, a, as a community. Number one, Moses did this, blah, blah, blah. Number two, the Israelites did that, da, 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 yada, 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 right? Whatever it is, those little few minutes of that little kind of a sermonette, if you will, should make sense to the actual Torah portion and you should understand the Hebrew. Now, if you go online or if you look in the Strong's Concordance, you might see that a Hebrew root means a bunch of stuff. For instance, when we looked up Pharaoh's heart being made hardened or heavy, it was the root, it was the root of kavad. Kavad. And that's where we get the Hebrew word kavod as a noun for glory. Okay? Now, the word for strengthen his heart or make it hard is hazak. Hazak. Okay? Now, we know that kavod means to be heavy. That is because the glory of God rests heavy upon anyone that he places his glory upon. We feel the, the, his glory upon us. Think, uh, think of the priest that carried the ark. <coughs> they carried the ark, they felt the weight of his glory. So, how does this relate to each other? Well, think about this. Being hard, hardened, can mean one thing of heavy in a negative sense, but then the same root can be used to refer to the heaviness of his glory. One's a positive, one's a negative. If you look it up in the Strong's, it's going to tell you it means everything. You have to decipher, based upon context, mm -hmm. what type of heaviness. Emotional heaviness to distraught, or being depressed, or heaviness of sensing the weight of his hand upon your life, the glory of God upon your life, the presence of God in your midst. The priest who had felt his heaviness. I mean, literally, in the presence of God, it's like you feel his breath. Mm -hmm. That's the wind of his spirit, the breath of his spirit breathing upon you. You should feel that. You should hear his words. You should sense his presence. It's almost like you feel him there. Mm -hmm. That's how heavy it is. It's, oh, trust me, it slows you down. The moment you feel the presence of God come on, you're like, whoa, let me slow down here. Mm -hmm. I can't jump around. I can't move. I've got to be still and know that he is God. He's just, he's just all around me. I just can't even really move right now. I just feel, wow, all I can do is just mm -hmm. surrender. Mm -hmm. That's the presence of God. So how is it that the same root can be a negative, heavy, like depressed, and actually mean weighty in, in its <coughs> weight of glory. Well, because the root just means heavy. Well, you can choose which heavy you mean. Oh, that's heavy. That's a heavy ready right there. It's a heavy revelation, right? That's a good thing. But if I say, this is too heavy for me to bear, now you know I take the word heavy in a different context. So if it works in English, it should work in Hebrew. It works the same. So don't get confused when you read a definition of a word and it seems to say it means everything. It doesn't mean everything. They're just giving you the ways it's been translated from the King James Bible. And you've got to go back and realize that sometimes even good old King James, you know, they say if it was good enough for King James, it was good enough for... If it was good enough for Jesus, they say, it was good enough for, uh, uh, for me. But Jesus didn't speak King James. No. Plus his name is Yeshua, and he didn't ever, was never called Jesus, ever, in his life. Think about this. Imagine never being called Jesus one day in your life, but the whole world is calling you Jesus. <laughs> so it's like being uh, born Pedro, uh, Pedro, and being called Pedro. Hey, Pedro, how you doing, Pedro? Well, at least you're close. And then in Italian, some Italian goes, Ah, Pietro, what am I doing? Pizza. I mean, you know, I mean, it's, it's just not going to be the same for the person who grew up Pedro. Even though Pietro, you can see the connection, right? Mm -hmm. Right. In Greek, Paul would be Pavlos today. Pavlos. But Paulos, you know, it, it, you know, it, I, I think it's the Portuguese or Italian is Paulo. Paulo. But you, you, you look at it in, in Greek. The U is a V sound, so it's Pavlos. And I can actually look up online a Greek trans, uh, uh, utterance of the New Testament, the whole New Testament in Greek. So I can check my Greek that way by just going to a Greek-speaking person who's basically recorded the whole New Testament in Greek. 
Wouldn't that be cool if we had a Septuagint also? Mm -hmm. I think there might be a resource I could find it. I'll look, look for it. But we definitely have also the, the Greek Hebrew scriptures, uh, the Hebrew translated into Greek, also online for you to read. But, you know, it'd be great to have a resource to hear it also. Okay. So these are resources I want you to be using. The Mechon, uh, hyphen Mamre dot org, Bible dot uh, org dot org, and Blue Letter Bible dot org, or the app. And it will help a lot. Okay? So now, um, did anybody else want their Torah portion done? Sure, why not? Okay, why not? I know you've heard it before. Oh, I've heard it. I've also been practicing. Oh, well, that's good. Okay, so we have Leviticus now. So we have one from Genesis, one from Exodus. Now we're going to take one from Leviticus. And this is Achremot. And you also have the double portion of Kedoshim. So you have, you have the option of actually learning a little bit from each one. Mm -hmm. And uh, being able to roll the scroll in between. And so this starts in, if you want to turn to Leviticus 16, 1. God spoke to Moses right after the death of Aaron's two sons, who brought an unauthorized offer before God and died. Vayidaber Aronai el Moshe Achremot, Shnei Bene Aharon, Bekorvatam, Livnei Aronai Vayamutu. Vayamutu. Okay? So that's actually, so you could actually hear it spoken on a normal level on mechonmamre.org, or you can hear it sung here on bible.org.org. Great, great. I'm going to listen to it one more time, because I'm going to show you how. Okay, so I have my transliteration here. But I've had a night and Moshe, a promotion, a bene, a harom, a corvatam, a shine, a bene, a harom, a frontam, a la. No, but uh, the timing, it was the two words together. Yeah. So, um, a corvatam. Something roughly like that. But basically what happens is I learn the word, I learn the meaning of the word, I learn how to sound it normally, and then I learn how to canter it, because there's two different things. When we sing Jerusalem, it's different from when we speak Jerusalem. Jerus Jerusalem is Yerushalayim. Everybody say that. Yerushalayim. But when you sing it, most of the time the timing forces you to say Yerushalayim. It's just the timing of the song. It's no different in English. Certain English words, if you ever listen to the melody of words, we twist and contort words all the time in English to make it fit our melody. We'll speed up a part, slow down a part, to make it fit the melody of the song. Hebrew is no different. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Yerushalayim. So we, Yerushalayim versus Yerushalayim. Now, if you're singing Yerushalayim, these are Yerushalayim, shells, shells, See, so Jerusalem of gold. That song, the melody fits the timing in Hebrew and in singing. Yerushalayim versus Yerushalayim. You know that throws everything off. And so people learn Hebrew from songs, but they don't actually learn how to speak it because it's improper timing. So, for instance, some of you that say Rosh Kodesh, it's not Rosh Kodesh. It's Rosh Chodesh. Every time I hear that, I want to correct and go, no, just be patient. They'll learn it in time. It's Rosh Chodesh, not Rosh Kodesh. Now, if you say Hadesh, that's different. Like, here's a, uh, uh, one of the... Psalms I've been putting to memory uh, is actually Psalms 51, I think it's verse number 10? 10 or 12, um, which actually says, Created me a clean heart, O God. So it's, Lev Taho Elohim. And then we have, uh, so, Created me a clean heart, oh, no, uh, Lev Taho Berali Elohim. So created me, Berali, Berali, created me, 
So Bet Ali means created me. So Lev is heart, Tor is clean. Created me a clean heart, O oh God. Okay. And then and renew a right spirit actually starts with and a spirit that's right, renew in, in, in my inner parts, in, in me, in my inner parts, literally. So it's Beruach Nachon, Beruach Nachon, Chadesh, what was the last part? Bekirbi. Uh, so it's actually rhymed in Hebrew. Um, so, or actually, I said that wrong, it's Lev Tachor Elohim Berali. And then it's Beruach Nachon Chadesh Bekerbi. So it literally rhymes in Hebrew. Oh, wow. Created me a clean heart, O God, and right spirit within me. So I was even thinking we can actually start singing that song in Hebrew and sing that part of the, at least that part of the verse in Hebrew. Wouldn't that be cool? Created me a clean heart. I mean, we could actually do that in Hebrew now. But that's something that um, I've been trying to do is put verses to memory. So that one I just barely started this week, so I'm just trying to. Uh, get it ingrained in my head. But a lot of times music is what helps you remember. So this mm -hmm. is why the Torah is sung in a way to make it the melody of your heart so you remember it, okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, and I've got to close. So basically, this is what you're going to start doing is taking the Torah portion. First of all, the name of the portion is usually going to be either the first word or the first significant word in the text. And you need to learn what it means. If you find that you go to the website and because you're confused that they only give you the, the root, like for this one, they're probably going to give you um, Rosh here. They probably won't give you anything for the letter B. They're going to give you Bara here for a root. They probably will give you Elohim, but as you keep going through the rest of the verse, you're going to find out you don't have the whole word in definition. You have the root. And so that's what's going to be confusing is they're not going to give you the whole thing. So you have to compare the roots to the actual reading of the text and find out what's the prefix, mm -hmm. what's the suffix at the end, what's the vowel change for the conjugation, and what, what helps is Hebrew class. We just translated a whole verse today, and it made sense that we found out that kavad was translated in the hif al form of the binyanin. Now, that makes no sense to any of you that hasn't been studying with us, if you haven't been studying with us for a while. Hif al means I add the the, to the pa'al form of a verb, pa'al is the Hebrew word for verb, po'el, and you add a he in front of the root letters. So kavad becomes chavad because of the change of the, uh, the taking out of the, the gesh in the letter. And so we remove that and it becomes a ha sound. And hich, the letter he and the, the, the yud is added and it becomes hichbadati. Ikbarati means, I causatively hardened Pharaoh's heart. Mm -hmm. I was the cause for his heart being hardened. Mm -hmm, of course. Now, of course, mm -hmm. we proved today that it happened only on the sixth plague. Mm -hmm. So all five plagues previously, he hardened his own heart. Mm -hmm. By the sixth plague, God started doing some hardening, but he did it in two ways. He either made it his heart that was already heavy, more heavy, mm -hmm. or whatever he was weak to finish, God strengthened his weakness. So I'm going to let you finish what you started. You wanted to do it in the first place. I'm going to let you finish. Because you're, you're already taking me this far. You're gonna, we're going to go all the way with this. Because you've proven yourself to be a vessel of dishonor, and I can't use you for a vessel of honor. You've lied, you've lied to me five times already. Okay? So let's, uh, let's close today. Uh, how many of you feel like you learned a little something today? Okay. This is to help start you on to research your own tour portion. So try to see if, uh, if we can get your information today, if you haven't already gotten it. Um, so we can uh, plug in your dates and you get your Torah portion and you can start looking up on the website how to memorize, to listen to it. Because even if you're not good at he reading Hebrew, you could technically put it to memory. Mm -hmm. But just playing it, treat it like it's a song. Because that's what it is. Okay, let's close the prayer. Abba, we thank you, Lord God, for your blessings on each one of these uh, bar uh, mitzvah trainees today, Lord God, these uh, students that are wanting to learn your word in a deeper way. And Father, ever since the the ages of 12 and 13, boys and girls begin to take on their, their manhood, their womanhood in a different way, Lord God, by accepting their role in the community. And I just thank you, Lord God, in this Messianic congregation, 
and in the Messianic community, we want to play a significant role. We want to know the Hebrew language that you gave us. We want to be able to speak it, understand it, sing it, rejoice with it, pray with that language. And Father Lord, that one day communicate to Jews and fellow Israelis about the good news of Yeshua the Messiah. And one day in the New Jerusalem, may we all speak Hebrew because we're going to study the Torah together. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, for blessing each one of us as we go home and bring us back again to the next one next month. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Shavuot Tov. Yeah, that's a difference in...